Hello everyone, it is me, Jared Gaming here, and welcome to something that is definitely not uh, advice for most of you viewers out there. So, um, actually, yeah, I'm being serious about that. So what I'm about to explain or what I want to talk about is definitely not, um, it's definitely not meant for you, most of my viewers, even though I'm pretty sure that I'm going to say that and I'm still going to get a bunch of viewers who should not be watching this still watching this but just saying there's going to be some content that i want to show that i really need to talk about that's definitely not um that's definitely not meant to be viewed by young viewers like you guys or well actually then again pretty sure people who actually have done this or you know whatever is um i don't know so anyways today was supposed to be like any other morning you know i slept at like 3 a.m today because i was on a discord call for quite a while um what is it i hecking um go on i wake up this morning at like you know with like two different alarms at like you know 9 50 stuff like that like just wishing that i don't have to get up and stuff i you know go on my phone which is at like four percent hilariously enough but for a, whatever reason, that 4% was enough to show me something I am still refusing to believe of. So I log on to Twitter today. And um, I am seeing literally the most insane things that I have ever seen. So um, let me find exactly what the tweet was that I saw this morning and that I was still refusing to believe was even real. There's actually a lot of tweets I found that actually, uh, maybe in like, what the heck? I mean, other than the many other tweets that I have liked that is about fan art of the Hyperdimension Neptunia series, which is, you know, pretty hot. There is a lot of things I woke up to just like, still in disbelief. Oh, uh, I, you know, like a bunch of fan art tweets. And then I find this tweet from, um, Mighty Keefe. And it, it just simply says, uh, what happened to Nairo? Is he okay? And at first I was thinking, well, I did remember seeing this tweet between Nairo and freaking, who was it? Captain Zack, I think. But I didn't really go in depth into it because it seemed like as if it was like some sort of lie and I just wasn't, and I, I didn't think that was just worth my time. But then I scroll through Mighty Keith's tweets or comments or replies, and then I'm starting to see a bunch of weird, weird, weird ones that are like, what the heck? Like I ha like there's this one tweet this guy who says who's gonna tell him and like and then there's a here there here's this other tweet, Kitaro, Nairo, whoever the heck that other guy is and D one or uh, I forgot I forgot what D one stands for but I know him all got exposed for, um, pedophilia, and predator acting stuff so basically they got exposed for predatory activity. Thankfully, Guitar apologized, but Nairo deactivated his Twitter. D1 just hurts so me, it just hurts me so much though. So, literally, probably the three biggest people I know in the community, the Smash community, um, are now exposed for pedophiles. So, obviously, I was definitely confused. What the heck? Uh, what's going on? I need some, uh, you know, update to this. And then I get this one from Generation Gaming. This. And it's this tweet from Captain Zack himself. And it literally just says, I'm tired of living a life of lies. And there's this, just this thing that I have to read, which I think I will read a little bit because, again, I mean, I haven't read it yet. I definitely want to... um see what is definitely up though there's also like three other things that i found as well there's this hacking like bystander thing that is bystander intervention that i'm not sure what any of that is about and then i also found this like twit thing from who was it uh dacia or just day this was uploaded today apparently from a twit longer and uh it was it's just basically the the headline is sexual harassment from top players slash commentators, you know, top players being Nairo and commentators being Kataro and, uh, D1. And it's just this big old long essay, and then I see this whole, like, first D1, and then 
I'm assu- I think from reading a little bit or from a tweet, it was something about like this girl who pretended to be an adult who apparently, you know, did the thing with Kataro and, you know, Kataro didn't even know that the, the girl hacking was a minor. So, yeah, that's a thing. And then here I got freaking Captain Zack with his beautiful essay that I still haven't read yet of hacking, um, you know, stuff. So I'm gonna actually read this and I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna try and read this and I'm gonna see if I can like skip over some of the parts that may sound actually very important. So also, if you guys don't know who Captain Zack is, if I'm not mistaken, I think, actually I might have to look at his profile a little bit more because I kind of forgot who Captain Zack was or if I might be mistaken by him. So I, I guess I really don't know Captain Zack, but Captain Zack um, is another one of those, um, competitive uh smash players who seems to be a bayonetta daisy and byleth main now apparently which i thought i was thinking i think i saw i was thinking of a different zach who was a rob main or maybe that is him and i'm just like blurring the lines between him and whoever is that rob main person but anyways like i said he made this twit longer of um i'm tired of living a life of lies so like i said i'm gonna read it and i'm gonna probably edit out some of the parts that are probably not important or probably will not entice you guys so here we go if you're a family member of mine do not read this post i am not ready to talk about this stuff with you i don't know if i ever will be <laughs> i'm pretty sure if it's a family member of his they're definitely going to find out and they're going to be like all oh, like no son we're, we're definitely reading this we're definitely reading this i started playing in smash tournaments when i was 12 years old three years later when i was 15 years old i had my first sexual encounter at a smash tournament ceo dreamland 2017 friday night april 14th was the first time anything happened with nairo him being 20 years old at the time so that means he's 23 now right luckily i recorded all my actions with someone on discord they are verifiable with timestamps that coincide with others who I had messaged. I am not posting this with the intention of canceling Nairo. I simply wish to tell the truth about what happened. Nairo canceled himself before anyone even canceled him. So, um, too late there, buddy. Even though in these messages, I am the one in 10, even I am the one in, I'm bad at reading. Even though in these messages, I am the one in 10, imitating, if I read that correctly, which I'm pretty sure I did not, I would just like to remind you, I was 15 years old at the time. Nairo was 20, going on 21. I am not going to be manipula man, uh, manipulated into feeling this This was my fault any, into, oh, into feeling like this was my fault any longer. Okay. And then there's that link, which I'll probably, actually, which I'll probably click on later, but, and I'll view it for myself just in case. Because it does say warning graphic and, you know, I really don't want to, uh, you know. Yeah. This album contains all the evidence I have to share with everyone. I have asked for the consent of all people. I don't know why people say person. I don't know why it's person. Like, what's so special about saying persons versus people? I don't know about you. I really hate when people say persons. So I'm just going to say people if I see the word person. So sorry. If you, if for whatever reason, you also want me to say persons, but you know, I have asked for the consent of all people I have uh, screenshotted the conversations of and blurred their names and profiles pictures out. I described all of the events that transpired during the weekend of CEO Dreamland and verified the actions with other references, uh, a tweet, a message, etc. This album also contains all the evidence that I have of Nairo and his brother sending me money to keep me quiet through PayPal. Wow, that's... Wow. Okay. That's interesting. They attempted to use a fake PayPal name in hopes no one else would be able to track the money back to them. However, I can verify that Jeremy Toga PayPal was indeed Nairo's account by matching up the money the amount of money I had asked for the text messages with Nairo. I was told that by doing my part, by not telling anyone about our relations, I'd receive financial help from him. The first two thousand dollars that I was sent was equal to the amount that I would have received from the sponsorship had I not been dropped. 
Wow, that's a... Actually, that's a hefty ton of money from a Smash streamer who's, you know, 20 years old and who's really, uh, you know, influential. Nairo? Get him just dropping $20 on you? Or $2,000? That's a... This is a lot of money. This was after the ally situation came to light. Nairo immediately started calling me because some people were trying to bring our situation to light, who is another Smash competitive player, if I'm not mistaken, or they're just being very literal when they said, like, you know, as in like, the daylight to the public, to everyone. I don't know. These are the July phone logs. The second phone logs, August 13th, are confirmations of him sending the $2,000 after calling me on the phone. We started using phone calls as our only means of communication and he told me to delete my messages with him on every single platform. Even though the word single isn't there, but I just like to say that just to make it seem more sincere. So that's actually really smart and really scary. Because obviously, unless you're recording a phone call, you, there's no way you're gonna track down what happened in the phone call. So, that's just, wow, that's just terrifying. And delete all the messages as well? Okay. Number one, because I haven't repaid my phone bill, so I only have Wi-Fi available on my phone, no cellular service. Number two, the only messages I currently have of our messen messenger conversations, he called me today around 12.40 p.m and told me about Scraft Punk's Twitter posts. He told me to reply to the tweet what I did. Okay, so fascinating. Number three, he called me right after he posted his tweet, then proceeded to rapidly call me after I did not pick up his call. Wow, Nairo, what the hell? Nairo did not run his exact wording by me for this tweet, and he painted me to be something completely different than what he told me he would say. And then we have this tweet from Nairo. Wow, okay, so I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say the screenshot, but on my screen, the link went to here. Literally just, the tweet is unavailable. So Nairo actually did deactivate his Twitter account. So the, the, the people were right in hecking uh, Mighty Keeps replies. Oh my goodness. I'm tired of living a life of lies. I'm tired of covering up for someone else's mistakes. I would like to say, however, that I never once threatened Nairo with coming public about my relations with him. The only reason I am saying my truth now is because I can't take it anymore. The stress of having this experience weighing on me for three years of my life is too much for me to bear. I would like to deeply apologize for lying to you all with my posts, with my past tweets today, and I just ask for your forgiveness. I do not want to quote unquote cancel Nairo, nor do I wish um, him ill in the slightest. I just want to live the truth. Very fascinating. Also, I'm gonna click on the link and I'm just gonna see what this is. Okay, so I am apparently, oh wow, actually now that I look at the bar, I am not done completely looking at this hecking, uh, you know, little post, but it seems like a bunch of, like, DMs between Captain Zack and someone that he blurred out, and it seems to be him, and it seems to be about Captain Zack telling his story. Wait, actually, no, wait, now that I think about it, let me check out Captain Zack's, you know, hecking, um, bio a little bit more, because, like, now that I look at this, um... This doesn't seem right, because, like, okay, my question is, is Captain Zack a boy or a girl? Because that's confusing me. No, uh, come on, Captain Zack has to be a guy. Okay, so, apparently, like I said, viewer discrepancy warning. Like I said, like, this isn't meant for any of you younger viewers, but, ooh, okay. Um, so, number one... From clicking on the link that hacking was in the um, Twit Longer thing, um, it brought me to a page of what seems to be a bunch of pictures of DMs that was made since April of 2017. So definitely a little over three years old. And it seems to be about what happened with Mr. Captain Zack, or if it is Mr. Captain Zack, and Nairo apparently actually doing it. So... Again, like I said, I'm in massive disbelief with what I'm reading. 
because like I said, it's hecking Nairo. Like obviously I, <laughs> he's a big man and obviously, you know, I'm not gonna believe any of this, you know, for seeing this, especially if since all this was posted today as I'm recording this, but if Nairo actually hecking, uh, you know, got rid of his um, Twitter, then that's, that's gotta mean something, right? So I think uh, I finally reached to the bottom of the hecking, uh, you know, link of this thing, even though there's apparently a next post available. Um, so from reading this, basically what I think I could summarize is that Captain Zack and Nairo, or when they were all in a hotel, it seems like, with hecking, who was, who was it else? I think it was also Void, Tweak, Sam Sora, uh, and other professional players like that. Captain Zack was there, obviously. It seems like it was being the youngest. Um, it seems like it's really just about him and Nairo just actually doing it. Like, you know, just kind of slapping the, you know, the bed and just, you know. But it seems like Captain Zack sort of encouraged it. And then Nairo just decided, frick it. Mm. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna be if I really want to send some of the screenshots to you know The actual video although I probably will without my own consent, but like I said, um, this is really interesting So and apparently who is it? There is another one from hecking uh, Dac uh Dacia, I'm not sure if I said that right or but apparently like I said, it wasn't just Nairo It was also apparently Kitaro and hecking um who was it? D1. So I'm I'm also going to uh, read a little bit of this because this video has been going on for a lot more longer than I thought. I thought I was going to do this for like 10 minutes, maybe, but I'm doing it for at the time I'm recording this, it's like 25 minutes in. So let me see. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to read this. I've been debating or not to come forth. It's terrifying, especially since a lot of these guys have a big following. I just pretended like nothing happened. If you don't know me, I have been in the Smash community since 2009, before before esports, before the Glamour, I think, I don't remember what that was, but before the money and before women were treated as trophies. Whoa. I quit in 2017 because Smash wasn't anything like it was when I first joined. It was ugly and I suffered a lot of abuse sexually and mentally. There are so many instances, but I wanted to share a few stories. Here they are. First, D1. When we first met at, Yo at YumaCon 2014, which I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, that might be, I think that might actually be the time before Smash Bros. 4 came out. Uh, D1 and I became really good friends. To me, he was one of the closest friends in the Smash community, or so I thought. Of course, you gotta add the, so I thought. Eventually, D1 would get touchier and more flirtish, or more flirty, flirt, oh, flirtatious. Oh my gosh, I told you, my reading is bad. If you know me, I had a genuine love for this game. Or for the, oh my god. If you know me, I had a genuine love for the game. I was in the scene to compete, to win, and to become a top player. Wow. For a woman, you know, or for a girl, that's really good. Because what was it? There was that one girl who played Isabel in that one Smash Ultimate tournament. Everyone was all like, ew, she beat Ally? Castrate her off the internet. And yeah, so being a woman in the Smash community is, I mean, especially from this, definitely seems impossible to even exist. I had no interest in dating or doing anything with anyone. I would go to about five or ten events a year. Admittedly, I would. Admittedly, that is, I can definitely understand that because, like, as someone who's part of the Splatoon G mods, I don't even know if I want to say that anymore. As someone who's part of the Splatoon community, I definitely had no interest in actually dating anyone. But there was definitely a handful amount of people who were interested in dating me. But I won't go into that later, unless. Actually, I won't go into it unless I feel like it, which I don't know when I'll come forth about it, but D1 would get touchier and touchier with each event I would begin to, with each event, and I would begin to reject him. <laughs> Sorry for my reading. Then came around Pentagon in California, if I said that right. D1 was going a day earlier and suggested I come, I could stay with him at his room. Ooh, cool. Smashers share and split hotel rooms all the time, right? We shared a king size bed, so I figured we'd uh, just sleep on opposite sides, innocently thinking. D1 suddenly, oh wow, D1 suddenly got naked and said that he likes to sleep naked. He likes to sleep naked usually. Okay, when you say naked, are you saying just, you know, just me, like shirtless, or just like everything off? Because 
if everything off and again viewer discrepancy warning if i haven't said that enough which i did i thought it was strange and i did feel uncomfortable it was him room it was him room i i, I think she meant to say it was his room it was his room and i didn't have a place to go maybe it would be okay we are friends right Okay, so maybe he had to have been shirtless, because I don't know why, but every time when I hear someone say he got naked, I, I first thing that comes to mind, ew, he took everything off? He knows I am not interested and wouldn't try anything, right? We will just sleep, right? So we are in a bed on opposite sides, him naked and me fully clothed, as a woman should be. As I tried to fall asleep, D1 would approach me with his body. I told him I was uncomfortable and I didn't want to do anything. He pouted, but after a while, he gave up and went to sleep. However, after that night, D1 acted completely different towards me. He started to ignore me and was completely cold to me. Why? All because I didn't sleep with him? I thought we were friends. I was so hurt from this, in from this instance, but looking back, it's emotionally manipulative. So basically from that paragraph that I just read, it seems like hecking a uh, her, uh, who was it? I'm just gonna call her Day. It seems like Day and Hecking D1 seem to have went to a hotel room just because, you know, you know, Smash Bros. players, ooh, uh, Smash Bros. players saying the sa sharing the same hotel room so they can, you know, play Smash Brothers? That's pretty epic until they share the same bed and the D1 seem to have um, decided to pull off that move. Um, yeah, okay. Wow. Top commentators and one drunk girl. I think this was the twi I think this was uh, the whole about the tweet that I read. Genesis 2017. So three years ago, again, summer time where Captain Zack decided to pull off that card. I guess I will never forget this. There was a room full of co top commentators, including Kitaro, my boy, until now, and D1, as well as Noel Brown, an FGC uh, fighting game community player known for sexual harassment of women. But why are they all together? Why are these guys friends? What? Anyway, all of these men were all over one girl, who was obviously very drunk. I accidentally stumbled by, but I was shocked on what I saw. The guys were flirting heavy heavily with her, and she was obviously very drunk. They then tried to get her into the bathroom and close the door behind them. All of them together? I tried my best to speak out against it, but I was kicked out. Afterwards, Noel Brown came out, harassing me uh, verbally and threatening me. Combo, bre combo breaker the year before, he attempted to try and get se and get sexual with me. Some guy I never met. I told only a couple of top Smash players at the time, but I guess they told him that I spoke to them about it. The thing is, sexual predators stick together. I felt betrayed. People who are friends with D1, I guarantee you they did something similar and they all stick together. Wow, that's insane. They have each other's backs and keep quiet about any sexual harassment. I guarantee you that they probably knew about Nairo too, but kept quiet. I'm just in total shock of what I'm reading. And it was just all from waking up this morning. I had no one to confine it. At the time I was friends with Static Manny who was there with me, whom will also betray my trust. And we left the hallway of the hotel room together to avoid Noel Brown. I had to catch my flight and left soon after. Wow. I have no idea what happened to the girl, but I was so disgusted and shocked that I will never, I never wanted to go back to a Smash tournament again. I mean, when you have a bunch of people and they pull a drunk girl in the bathroom, you know what's about to happen. Static Manny, another one who I thought I was friends with. CEO 2017, although I didn't enter the tournament, but because I lived in Orlando at the time, I wanted to visit and meet the legit friends I had who unfortunately are no longer legit friends with her. Static Manny being one of them, or so I thought, we were playing Mafia with Scat and his friends. Randomly, some guy started to be weird and trying to force me to take a picture with him during the game. Thankfully, Scat and friends uh, shoot him out, or shoot him away. I was a bit stressed, so I went outside to take a walk. Static Manny followed me. I confined it. I confined in him a lot about sexual harassment. I was talking to him about the weird guy, and while we were talking, he proceeded to try and force a kiss for me. I was so upset because I always talked to him about constant abuse 
within the community, and here I am, vulnerable, and he tries to do something with, to me. Afterwards, he would message me constantly on FB and Twitter because I, because I star? Because I star. I guess that must have been a typo. So I'm assuming FB must be Facebook then, or something? After that, I knew for sure I can't trust anyone in the community anymore. I was constantly being harassed and I felt there was genuinely no safe space. No one to talk to, no one to confine in. I quit Smash and I never looked back. Okay, so I'm not gonna read the rest of it, but from just reading this, um, it seems like, okay, this being back in 2017, I am generally shocked. Cause like, you know, we all know D1. I mean, hope, I mean, if you guys don't know D1 and Kataro, they're mainly the Smash commentators that you may see or may not see during some of the Smash tournaments that would be hosted locally. You know, back when, before this whole virus broke out. So to be reading all this and you know, on top of the whole Captain Zack and uh, Naira relationship and apparently them actually banging in the bed, which I'm still in shock and I still don't believe even though there's a whole, t there's a whole Discord chat log about it. This is uh, this is uh, not okay, you know? And so, like I said, I woke up this morning to like the most absurd amount of tweets that I have been uh, reading lately. You know, like freaking, uh, for example, um, like Hunty Bunt, you know, tweeting about like, you know, he's usually optimistic, but like, wow, you know, Smash is definitely in a downward spiral. And then you have Mighty Keef over here who wanted to tell his side of the, or who's basically all like, yo, th this is messed up and here's why, blah, 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 blah. I think I already read it, but I don't, or, or I don't quite remember exactly word by word, but you know, know that it, you know, know that it happened. And then here we also have Zero moving forward. The Smash Bros community needs to change. A reform needs to happen. Miners need to be protected. Security needs to be mandatory and stronger. Rules have to be in place to prevent um, unsupervised interaction, which apparently happens multiple times, which I had no idea. And then you have this tweet from Esam, which he looks like he's having, like just from reading this, it sounds like as if he had a breakdown about it and was all like, dang, I'm so sorry that I failed you community to protect the people that needed to be protected. But dang, I, that's, that's gotta be awful. And then you have Mr. Colin, our introspect over here. He's all like, man, I can't believe I supported, you know, uh, Nairo financially, only to then realize that he was using the money to pay, uh, uh, to pay Zach to stay quiet. Our money was uh, partly going toward covering up this heck. I just feel so used, man, forget, Forget that fact he lied, he used us. I feel sick. And it's Nairo, like again, uh, Nairo being like the biggest inspiration of the whole community, you know? And then you have freaking Sam Sor who's all like, yo, he actually addressed me by my first name just to tell me goodbye. And it was like, what is it, 356? Which, you know, from not seeing the AM or PM, I'm assuming that it must've been in the morning or something. I'm not sure because admittedly, I'm getting, I'm seeing a lot of some replies that were like 10 hours ago or something. But oh my goodness, everyone's going on like a mental like attack from all of this. So here we are now, Nairo, Kataro, and hacking um, D1 and whoever that static Manny is, which I'm not sure who that is, are all exposed of, you know, this stuff. And not only, it's been so much that there's actually a, um, what is it? That apparently now it's actually going like trending on YouTube. Several Smash gamers accused of sexual uh, harass, uh, sexual misconduct. A number of people have come forward, uh, uh, allegedly gamers, D1, uh, Sin I don't know who that is, Kataro and Nairo of sexual assault. And oh my goodness, like what the heck? Okay, so just now I literally tried looking at freaking uh, Kataro's page, but apparently the moment I loaded it up, it actually said that it was unavailable, surprisingly. And then there's also what seems to be a um, whole, uh, you know, thing with Kataro here. He made his own little like twit, lo twit longer about, um, you know, his situation or what happened. So I don't want to read it. So I'm just going to leave it on the screen for you guys to read it yourself. I'll probably also read it later as well myself, just in case, but it, it might be important. So in case if it is, do read it, please. Since, um, again, th th this is like, this is insane actually. And it's, there's also one from hacking um, D1 as well. There's also, oh yeah, there's also uh, something with Tweak. I mean, I don't know what Tweak has to do with any of this, but his, you know, Twitter account obviously isn't deactivated, which means that, um, you know, must be something important. And also from reading um, 
tweaks, a little like a uh, little twit longer thing. It seems like he didn't even know, or he didn't want to encourage, um, hecking um, who was it, Captain Zach, to do the thing with Nairo. He just didn't know that Nairo was, you know, doing that, and that's why he told him to stay with Nairo because he had no idea that Nairo was, you know, just that guy, and um, you know, actually, just of curiosity, I'm gonna real quick go on my uh, subscriptions on YouTube. Now I'm gonna see if I can find Nairo in my list. Okay, so, it, I mean, it could just be now at least, but Nairo's YouTube is still, you know, available, which means that while he did deactivate his Twitter account, cause you know, he didn't want to get canceled or, you know, he decided to cancel himself cause you know, what he did was pretty awful actually. His Twitter or not his Twitter, his YouTube is still up though. So surprising enough, you can still check out his YouTube, at least right now. Maybe by the time I post this, it'll probably be completely wiped off the internet. So while I'm recording this, I am still seeing Nairo's YouTube. So anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today. Um, oh my gosh, a lot has happened. And like I said, viewer discrepancy warning, even though I've said that hopefully a couple enough times to where most of you people would actually freaking listen to me. Um, again, I don't know what to say, actually. I'm genuinely shocked because, you know, again, this all, like, this is all happening this morning. Like, I literally started learning about this information literally before I was recording this. And it's, uh, what is it, July <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And like I said, like, I'm still wearing PJs. Like, you can't see it, but I'm still wearing PJs. Uh, I mean, discluding the shirt, but, because, you know, I sleep shirtless, but I don't count that as being naked because... Uh, when, when, when I say naked, I'm thinking, man, you got no clothes on, buddy. You're not even wearing your underwear. That's insane. So this is actually kind of crazy. And I mean, to me, I think why this is a lot more bigger than I think, or that you guys think is because, you know, in our, uh, Splatoon animation community, you know, you had Heavy the Squid, Omega the Squid Man, and hecking, uh, you know, Lizzie Rascal, and I guess TCS, if you want to include him, and, uh, Geo Craze. You know, who's been exposed like three different times, mind you. Um, the reason why I think this is more bigger is because the Smash community, it obviously holds a lot more people. And while I'll be, maybe it's not as bad as, you know, the Splatoon community to where the Splatoon animation community is now a completely separate thing from the Splatoon community who just want to game and be competitive at the game. You know, that's apparently a lot more different, but um, here... Uh, in the Smash community, well, not only is this a little bit new, but the fact that it it's being exposed from literally one of the biggest Smash, actually, not only the most biggest and most influential Smash people in the in the scene, but Nairo was even featured in Nintendo's channel about his perspective of the whole Smash competitive scenery. So the fact that you know this is this. I mean, personally, why I'm not as sad as I probably should be is, uh, well, first of all, I, I'm not really that much of an emotional person anymore, since especially since, especially when I'm quarantined now. So, and you know, I've been getting a lot lack of sleep, so it's a lot more harder to feel for things. But this is indeed really messed up, and this is indeed really unfortunate. And I, and yeah, like Mike, you said, this is a nightmare. I'm, I'm, I'm in total shock that we're living in a timeline where I'm um, hacking Nairo D1. And Kataro, literally one of the biggest people in the community, and whoever else, are pedos. Actual pedos. So anyways, guys, um, I'm just going to end it off here. I've been actually holding my phone with my left hand for the longest time, so it's really hurting my fingers and all that types of stuff. So um, this is honestly really unfortunate. If you guys are really big people or really love Nairo, Kataro, or D1 and Static Manny or, you know, whoever he is. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry that hacking, um, I'm sorry that... I'm sorry, I don't know how to say, I don't know how to say sorry the right way, but I, I feel you guys. Because as someone who's in the Splatoon animator community, and then to have everyone that he's, that I've looked up to, and um, all, every single one of them to be pedos one way or the other. I feel you guys, honestly. I really do feel you. So, um, lesson learned, don't be horny. Like, like I, I've always said this multiple times, or I've always had this in mind, but everyone in the world is horny. Every single one of them. I mean, even I can be horny sometimes, but 
That's why I obviously don't show it off to people on the internet. You guys are probably like, whoa, Jared can get horny? But obviously you guys don't know because I'm not, why would I share that in public? Like for those of you guys who do share that stuff like that in public, I'm just saying one way or the other, you're probably gonna get canceled. So um, again, lesson learned, don't be horny. Don't be horny in public at least and all that types of stuff. So hope you guys have learned something out of this. And again, I'm sorry for you guys who really love, I'm sorry, actually no. I'm sorry for everyone that loves Nairo, Kataro, and D1. I'm sorry for everyone that actually supported them financially or mentally to Kataro, Nairo, and D1. And I'm sorry for everyone that was associated with Kitaro, Nairo, and D1, and again, Static Manny, whoever the heck he is, because I actually, I've never heard of him until now. God bless you guys, and let's just hope 2021 would be a, a million times better year than this year. I'll see you guys whatever we do next. Take care. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. I'm sorry for the little, like, sun glare right there, as you can see on my chin, or near my chin, but um, see you guys later. Take care. Definitely, God bless you guys. And don't be horny, ever, unless you're married. Actually, no, even when you're married, don't be.